Hey, hi friends and namaste. Welcome to the new session of AZ 900 that is Azure Fundamental Exam. And uh, this is set two. Uh, in this particular session, we are mainly going to cover 50 questions. In the previous session of AZ 900 that is set one, we have covered almost 50 plus questions. So guys, uh, those who are new to this channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you don't subscribe, share or like also, it's not no no hard feelings from my side and uh, yeah so without wasting a single minute let's get started but before getting started i'll tell you because in most of my videos you haven't seen me okay so if you want to see me how i look like and all uh, jokes apart but yeah so you can visit uh, my channel it's not my channel i can say it's my uh, son and wife channel so there you can see me uh, the name of the channel is Art and Mom. I have linked that channel uh, to this engineer Abhishek Roshan channel. So yeah, moving, uh, talk, coming to the point, uh, that is either 900. So in the previous session, I have told you, right, there will be a percentage for each and every section, each and every module. There will be four modules. The first module is your understand cloud concept, second module, which, which will be almost 15 to 20 percent of footage second module is your understand core azure services that is almost 30 to 35 percent so in this particular module we are going to cover this set two that is understand core azure services and in set three there is understanding security privacy compliance and trust that is almost of 20 to 30 percent and the set four four will be understand azure pricing and support that will be 20 to 25 percent so till now we have covered cloud concept storage that is of 15 to 20 percent and in this particular uh, set of questions or in this particular session we are going to cover compute data and networking that is of 30 to 35 percent so please be focused and let's move on to question number one so the question is which of the following service can be used to enable mfa for azure users see what is you need to know what exactly mfa mfa is nothing but multi-factor authentication so nowadays most of the companies are going with this MFA for authentication to log in to their VDI or you can say to the client VDI and even log in to the Windows server or a Linux server we were using this multi-factor authentication. So multi-factor authentication is directly uh, you can say related to is with your AD that is Azure Active Directory. So answer for this one is Azure Active Directory. Okay. And rest all see, uh, if you, if you, what you need to do is Azure Sentinel, Azure Key Vault, Azure Security Center, you need to get all these definitions, guys, right? So, yeah. Okay, moving to the next question that is, you are planning to set up an Azure free account after 30 days. Would some Azure products still free to use? Yes, absolutely it is free to use because, uh, in the previous session I have clearly told there are total four types of subscription plan. That is one is your developer plan. Another one is your professional, another one is your uh, uh, professional direct and there is something called your standard plan, right? And that is something called premier plan. Will be. There are some four types of plan will be there. So even you can see uh, here also I can show you. Uh, let me see if it is there or not. Yeah, so developer, standard, professional, direct and premier. So these are the plans. Uh, so uh, what you need to do is, so here if you come to this one, so ultimately the developer plan will be is of free of cost or the subscription will be free. Okay, but some services will be, uh, you can still use after 30 days also. Okay, so moving to the next question, question number three, a company plan to upgrade its current Azure AD. So listen very carefully, Azure AD, AD Active Directory. Free plan to Azure AD Premium plan, that is P1. Does Microsoft provide the same feature for both the plan? Yes or no? Absolutely not, because free has some features and obviously the premium has another, uh, some additional features will be there and the features will be absolutely different from your free plan. So don't relate question one to question two. Okay, so that is our answer is no. Now moving to the next question that is your, your company trying to access benefit of using Azure Cosmos DB. Can they migrate their existing MongoDB onto Azure Cosmos DB. Yes, absolutely you can migrate because see uh, uh, when you migrate MongoDB and Azure Cosmos, there are some APIs will be there. 
which you can use it directly to the Azure Cosmos DB. So it will be easy to migrate from MongoDB to Cosmos DB in your Azure, right? So that is there. Okay. So if you if you can see also uh, the answer. Uh, so I'm I'm not going in depth uh, as I told you, right? So if I go in depth, the video will become lengthy, guys. So I'll uh, prepare a separate course for Azure fundamental where only thing you are going to get is the concepts. Okay. That is not for the certification. That complete concepts will be there, which if you want to learn more about the Azure. Okay. So now the thing is the question. Next question is a company has a set of VMs in Azure. Uh, one VM is down due to underlying Azure infra for an extended period. So it breached SLA defined by Microsoft. So how Microsoft reimburse the downtime cost? Okay, so I will tell you very clearly. Microsoft is not going to credit anything in your account, right? If if something goes wrong, okay. So if it's some SLA that is service layer agreement, SLA is nothing but it's a service layer agreement. So it so obviously there will be some SLA for uh, everything. So uh, if you are working in an organization, you know there is there are uh, tickets will be there, right? P1, P2, P3, P4 like that. So every ticket has its SLA, right? Some tickets are having SLA of two days. Some tickets are having SLA of 24 hours. Some tickets have SLA of almost two hours. So if you breach that SLA, then how Microsoft is going to reimburse that uh, downtime cost, guys? Correct. So here, by directly spending money to the customer bank account, absolutely not. By spinning up another VM free of cost for the customer, absolutely not. Right. Because it's it's uh, totally something uh, uh, which is not acceptable, right? Correct, guys. Now the next thing is by providing service credit to customer. Okay. So and the next is by providing service free of cost to use of specific duration. See, it's just a breach of a SLA. So how it's he he can do a reimbursement is by only providing service credit to customer. He can give extra service, but he cannot credit money to your account for that one. It's not an infrastructure failure. It's just a breach, right? It's a service layer breach because that has to be finished in two hours. That might be finished in some four hours, right? Some issue was there, but that that has to be taken care in two hours. But that that extended to some three hours or four hours. So that is. Something uh, he can uh, give you reimbursement by service credit only. So answer for this one is nothing but by providing service credit. That is C. Okay. Now moving to the question number six. So a company currently has the following unused resources: ten uh, user account in Azure AD, five user account in Azure AD. Uh, sorry, uh, 10 user account in Azure AD, 5 user group in Azure AD, 10 public IP address, 10 network interface. So they want to reduce the cost if they remove the user group from Azure AD. Okay, Azure AD would this fulfill the requirement? Absolutely not. Because see, uh, if you want to reduce the under, say it's not like it's if, if you can only remove the Azure uh, uh, user group, so it's going to reduce your uh, right. So it's going to reduce your resources, or if you, if you are not using, it's going to reduce your cost, right? Absolutely, it's not going to reduce your cost. So that 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 uh, should be your IP will be also associated with that particular resource, right? Your network interface is also associated with this particular. Uh, machine or the resource, right? So only if you think that if you remove that uh, only some part of uh, what we can say, only removing a user group will reduce the cost. So absolutely not, right, guys? So are you getting my point? Are you with me? Okay. So moving to the next question. What is the next question? Next question is a company has launched a set of VMs in current pay as you go subscription. After launching, it seems to be Hitting a limit. Fine. They cannot provision additional VM. Which one is correct way to provision more VM? 
you you understand the question okay so normally what happened is you if you use any cloud it's not a aws azure or any cloud if you use any clouds as i said right it is a service so pay as you go so the subscription which you take every subscription has some limit but if you want to provision more vms if you want to create more vms then what is the correct way to do that one raise the support ticket with microsoft increase the limit in azure monitoring increase the limiting in azure cli c you are under some subscription so you cannot do anything to increase technically i am talking about increase your vm limit you cannot configure because this entire infrastructure is maintained by azure so what will be the answer you need to raise a ticket with microsoft either you should go for a, a next level of subscription or your subscription plan has to change or you need to request them that i want to provision some 100 vms more right okay moving to the next question guys a company wants to deploy various solution in azure they want to ensure that suspicious attack and threats to the resources in their account should be prevented which one help prevent such attack by using built in sensor in azure it's very pretty and simple so as i told you if you go and read the definition of microsoft defender for identity any any what i can say any kind of attack if you want to prevent okay using built in sensor in azure remember this particular word built in sensor so the definition for that one is microsoft defender for identity okay so other things you can go and you can get the definition of all this so, so question number 9 a company is planning deploy resources in azure they want to have the ability to manage user access to resources uh, across multiple subscription which one help you to achieve the requirement so answer for this one is management group so what you need to do guys uh, you need to uh, go and see the definition of resource group azure policy and azure app services right so okay uh, moving to the next uh, question that is would the azure firewall service encrypt all network traffic sent from azure to internet so the answer for this one is absolutely no uh, because see if you want to uh, encrypt something okay uh, or the services would the azure firewall service encrypt all network traffic sent from azure to internet if you are sending some from azure to internet you cannot encrypt that one right so if you are sending to internet means it means what it is going to be public for everyone so if you encrypt the user will not able to decrypt that one he is the normal user right so answer for this one is no okay so what was the previous question uh, this one management group and then this one and then finally we came to question number 11 okay so a company is planning to deploy a resource in azure they want to protect their resources against ddos attack you uh, if there some uh, earlier question we have seen right there are different types of attack that is built in sensor attack for that we have defender in place right microsoft defender but here what are they are telling is a company is planning to deploy resources in azure and they want to protect their resource against ddos that is denial of service if you heard of i'm not sure okay uh, attack and get real time attack metrics which solution company of so it is something you need to choose from ddos only so this is something a protection plan a subscription plan i can say that is standard plan uh, because developer plan you cannot take uh, it doesn't have the, that is a free of cost okay so it doesn't have that uh, feature in it so you need to go with a standard plan only that is ddos that is enough so so you can get the real time attack matrix case so it is ddos protection standard right are you getting my point guys correct moving to the next question uh, that is a company has a set of vm in azure they want to find out which users shut down a particular vm in last 7 days which one help them to achieve the requirement it's pretty simple and easy if you want to know the activity of your system your virtual machine or anything right 
even in linux also even in a virtual machine or anywhere in the application also you need to look somewhere in the logs right so it's the answer is azure activity logs these are called azure activity logs correct moving to the next question guys can network security group be used to encrypt all network traffic sent from azure to internet no security group is what security group is for your inbound and outbound right that is the incoming traffic and outgoing traffic it's not going to encrypt something it's not some kind of a tool who is going to encrypt your traffic right it's just a allowing it's a rule right it's a rule where you are telling what what traffic should you re, uh, receive from different ports like port 43 port or https right you have a heard of all this so security group is related to that yes it's common in aws and azure it's common right so answer for this one is no okay moving to the next question that is a company want to ensure the azure complies with the rules and regulation of reason for hosting resources which of the following can assist company in getting required compliance report c azure ad is nothing to do with your compliance okay azure advisor is also nothing to do with your remember if you in the set one i have told you it's related to your operation your cost your uh, optimization right but it's not related to your compliance now the next thing is azure security center asc that is not also so answer for this one is microsoft trust center so if you want which of the following can assist you in getting required compliance report right guys okay uh, moving to the next question so question number 15 a company wants to ensure the azure resources within the resource group okay rg1 don't get deleted accidentally don't get deleted accidentally which of the following would you use for this purpose okay so see uh, if you go and if you um, read the definition of logs okay so logs are something if you implement on a resource group and logs can be implemented only on resource group okay it's not on the azure resources in the resource group a company wants to ensure that the azure resources within the resource group are the don't get deleted so for that one which one would you prefer so that is your logs okay so if you read the definition of logs you will get this answer okay moving to the next question guys a company is planning to deploy resources to azure which of the following in azure provide a platform for defining the dependencies between resources so they are deployed in the correct order okay listen very carefully again i am repeating the question that is a company is planning to deploy resources to azure the company is planning to deploy resources to azure which of the following azure provides a platform for defining the dependencies between resources so they are deployed in correct order so answer for this is one is azure resource azure resource manager So if you go and see the definition, that is some, there is also something called AMG, that is different. Azure Management Group. Don't get confused. There is Azure ARM template also you have heard of in set one, but here there is something called Azure Resource Manager. Okay, ARM will be responsible for this one. Even uh, you don't get confused with Azure Resource Group. That is different. Okay, so answer is ARM. Okay. Now moving to the next question, guys. A company is planning to set up a solution in Azure. The solution has following main requirement: provide a managed service that could be used to manage and scale container-based application, which can help company to meet the requirement. When it comes to container, you need to think in terms of Docker, Docker Swarm, and Kubernetes. Okay, because containers are related to only Docker and your Kubernetes. so here did you see anything related to docker and kubernetes azure event grid no azure devops absolutely no okay as you see azure devops is something different okay and then something called azure kubernetes okay so this is the answer okay
Now moving to the next question that is a company is planning to set up a solution in Azure. The solution hey. has following main requirement provide a platform for creating workflow. Okay. So which of the following do you think it meets the requirement? You need to create a workflow. To creating a, a workflow, there is something called logic apps in Azure. There are different services in Azure. So if you want to create a workflow, that is your Azure logic app. Okay. Now moving to the next question, that is question number 19. A company is planning to set up a solution in Azure. The solution has following main requirement provide the ability to store petabytes of data can run complex queries across data. So here there are two confusions should be there. If the answer, see, the answer is absolutely it is Azure Synapse. Okay, uh, Synapse you can say, but then if data lake will be there, so don't get confused. It's telling provide the ability to store petabyte of a data. It's huge data, right? And can run and, and, and the second thing is can run complex queries across data. So for that one is any Azure synapses. Okay. Uh, now moving to the next question, question number 20. A company has <laughs> set up an Azure subscription and Azure tenant. Tenant means network. Okay. They want to implement a way to group the resources logically which could be used for this requirement. So it is Azure resource group. Availability set is different. Availability zone you know what exactly is. ARM also you know what exactly it is. Azure reason also know what exactly. So answer for this one is Azure resource group. Okay. So this is why I am telling if you uh, if you gone through my previous video so you will be easily you will be easy to recognize what is is that as you availability zone right so answer for this one is as your resource group guys okay moving to the next question guys that is the company is planning to set up a solution in azure the solution has following main requirement provide the ability to process data from millions of sensors be very specific when it comes to sensors then it is something called iot right so it's pretty simple and easy when it comes to sensor, if you want to process something, then you need some kind of a device, right? And the device obviously will have some kind of IoT, IoT device. Like you have seen a POS machine, right? POS machine is nothing but if you swipe your card, right? Or uh, for billing for, from the debit and credit card, that is also IT, IoT based, okay? And that is uh, uh, if you want to process millions of sensors, okay? Fine. Uh, so answer for this one is your Azure IoT Hub. Okay, now the moving to the next question. A company wants to migrate its on-premises server to Azure. They want to ensure that server can run even if a single data center goes down. It's pretty simple. In the session one, set one, I have told you those are called unplanned maintenance, right? In case of some hardware failure, right? So you need to implement fault tolerance. And for update domain is related to your update domain is related to your plan maintenance guys. This is why it is fault fault tolerance. Okay, moving to the next question. That is, which of the following is the best describe the above cloud model? So what is this is on premises. This is obviously one network to another network that is site to site network. And if it is from one client machine to a data center, then it is point to site. Remember, okay, that is site to site IPsec and cloud net over here. Uh, now here, what you need to mention is that is called your hybrid cloud. So hybrid cloud is nothing but this is. When you uh, communicate from site to site, that is on premises to your cloud net, to your public cloud. Okay, that is your hybrid hybrid cloud. Okay, now moving to the next question. What is that next question, guys? When can a company decommission its private cloud infrastructure hosted in its data center? Okay. When can a company decommission its private cloud infrastructure hosted in its data center? So in set one, I have clearly told you 
when all their servers are in public cloud it is just a opposite uh, question of that question you can say there the question was in a public uh, it's like that only if it is in public cloud it can be decommissioned right the answer for this one is nothing but when all their service servers are in the public cloud so question number 25 guys that is which is are not merit of a public cloud so you can easily know this answer if you know what exactly a public cloud so here it's telling which are not merits of a public cloud so lower capital cost that is absolutely true that is because pay as you go service is there okay so lower capital cost this is true uh, higher maintenance this because this is not the merit of a public cloud high reliability this is also a merit of a public cloud and higher capital cost okay so this is not a merit of a public cloud so only b and c is the answer that is higher maintenance and higher capital cost is not a merit of a public cloud okay moving to the next question guys uh, the question number uh, 26 uh, it team has android based workstation okay which of the following they can use to create desired vm so you need to know okay there are many in the session one also in the state one i have explained you there are many ways to create a vm from the azure cloud shell okay from the cli and from the power shell so not from the power app okay so answer is azure cloud shell azure cli and azure power shell these three are the answer pair. okay moving to the next question a company wants to host mission critical application on a set of vm in azure how can they achieve maximum possible uptime? Okay, a company wants to host mission critical application on set of a uh, set of a VMs in Azure. So, how can they achieve maximum possible uptime? Which following select all? So, if you really want to achieve maximum uptime, where your server doesn't go, uh, doesn't should not go for downtime, anything or if, if there should not be any failure. In that case, you need to do two things. One is availability set. I told you right what is availability set. That is for all unplanned uh, maintenance, and there is something called availability zone. Is it? You need to configure all these two. Okay. So by use of these two only, you can make sure your VMs will be uh, get maximum uptime. Okay. I'm moving to the next question, guys. That is question number twenty. A company wants to host mission critical application or set of your VM. They want to ensure that application recovers from reason white failure in Azure. Which of the following concepts need to be considered to fulfill the requirement? The previous question is prevention is better than cure. See, if you set up something, okay, before only, before the failure, it will recover, right? But here the case is just opposite. If the failure is already happened, okay. Your VM is already failure. Then how you can do? There is only one thing called DR. That is called disaster recovery, guys. Are you able to understand? Are you, are you with me, guys? Okay, moving to the next question, guys. Uh, we have done with this one. Okay, now moving to the next question. A company wants to create multiple data stores in Azure. They are data infrequently used. Which of the following? They are for block storage. So would be suitable to fulfill the requirement. So you need to know what is blob storage. So blob storage is always related to your pool storage and archive storage. Okay, so answer for this one is your C and D. Okay. Uh, now moving to the next question, guys. That is question number thirty. Uh, a company wants to host an application on a set of VM in Azure. The VM are going to run for longer period. Which of the following should be used to reduce cost? If you think that your VM is going to run for next one year, two year, or three year, so how you can reduce the cost of a VM? So the answer for this one is only reservation. Okay, because you need to take some kind of a reservation, then only you will get that concession. Okay, because you spin up a VM and that is going to be used for next twenty years down the line. So that is not the case normally, but yeah, in that case, you need to use Azure reservation. Okay, question number thirty-one, guys. So again, uh, remember these are the series of the questions, uh, whereas I told you very clearly. Okay, so these questions, once you uh, you cannot roll back, right? Once you answer, 
so you, if you think that your answer is wrong so you cannot roll back okay uh, so what is that question is uh, a company wants to set up users in its azure account they want uh, so they have segregated their users into groups okay a company wants to set up uh, users in azure account they have segregated their users into groups they want they now want to ensure that they they have right set of privileges for users and administrators accordingly so they need to manage privi uh, pri uh, privileges efficiently okay so that is true see if you want to if there will be normal user there will be some administrator will be there so if you want to segregate normal user with the administrator uh, administrators so you need to use some kind of a service right or some kind of a feature so you, you are or you can say you recommended using azure policies does this recommendation meet the requirement okay so answer for this one i will not tell you now because as i told you these are the series of the questions so first we'll see other questions also so now the next question is uh, the company wants to set up a users in the azure account they have segregated their users in the into groups the now they want to ensure that the right set of privileges for the users and administrators accordingly they need to manage privileges efficiently you uh, recommended using rbac okay the first one they were telling azure policy now the second one they are telling rbac okay now uh, see now the uh, third question is again same set of privileges now they are telling azure management group okay the question is same so the first one is no okay and the second one is rbac and azure management group is right answer so see uh, if you want to segregate a user from a administrator because a user has different set of uh, permission or privileges and uh, uh, you can say administrator has a different set of permissions and privileges so how we can achieve this one by using rbac and by using azure management group azure policies is not the right answer guys okay so i'll take you once again uh, to the question okay so this was the question and it's asking you to they need to manage privileges efficiently so in this case if it's asking azure policy then the answer is no now the next is uh, if it's telling rbac then the answer is yes and if it's telling azure management group then the answer is also yes now moving to the next question that is question number 34 a company wants to set up its application using serverless component they don't they don't want to manage the underlying infra for the application which of the following could be used to host code that could be done on a serverless infrastructure okay so there is only one answer that is called azure function this is the definition of a azure function if you want to run a, run a code with a serverless infrastructure then you need azure function okay now moving to the next question guys uh, that is question number 35 a company wants to set up its application using serverless component they don't want to manage the underlying infra for the application which of the following could be used to implement now see their serverless infrastructure for a code okay and now it's just a see there is a small difference don't get confused with the previous question which of the following could be used to implement a workflow that could be run on a serverless infrastructure okay so earlier the answer if you see what it was that is azure function so read this one very carefully which of the following could be used to host code host code that could be run on a serverless infrastructure that is azure function host code this part you need to focus now don't get confused now the next question is which of the following could be used to implement workflow okay so for that we have azure logic app okay now moving to the next question guys your company data stored in archive storage which of the following tasks must be done before accessing the data in the storage account so the answer for this one is it is simple that is the data needs to be rehydrated okay so uh, the data needs to be rehydrated answer number is d okay moving to the next question is just in time vm access so this is some kind of a vm okay uh, just in time vm access can be enabled using which of the following service azure version azure firewall azure front door and azure security center 
so ASC. So if you want to access this kind of a VM, these are some special kind of a VM, just in time VM, then you need to use Azure Security Center. Okay. Moving to the next question, guys. That is question number 38. Which of the following is used to group subscription together? Okay. So which of the following is used to group subscription together? That is management group only. Okay. Now moving to the next question, that is which of the following service can be used to host a data warehouse? Host a data warehouse. See, Azure DevOps is nothing to do with this one. Azure Bot has nothing to do with this one. Azure Cognitive Service has nothing to do with this one. The answer is Azure Synapse. You know, if you want to store something in petabytes, then you need, some, need something Azure Synapse. Okay. So for a data, uh, data warehouse, that is the answer is D. Moving to the question number 40, which of the following service can provide a declarative way to orchestrate the deployment of various resources? Okay, listen very carefully. Which of the following service can provide a declarative way to orchestrate the deployment of various resources? So answer for this one is deployment. It's related to your blueprint. That is Azure blueprint. Azure policy has nothing to do with this one. As your resource log, I told you, resource log is for permission. That is nothing to do with this one. Tag is also something related to Azure resource group. Okay. So answer is Azure Blueprint. Moving to the next question is, your company decided to deploy a set of VMs in Azure. They want to increase the availability of the underlying machine. You decide to deploy the machine across multiple resource groups. Would this fulfill requirement? No. So, if you need, to, if you want to increase the availability, means failover, right? There should not be any failover. So, you remember there is something called availability zone and availability set. And it's talking about, what it's talking about here? You decide your machine to uh, multiple resource group. Obviously, it's not. No answer. Okay. Now, moving to the next question. That is question number 42. Your company decides to deploy a set of VMs in Azure. They want to increase the availability of the underlying machine. You decide to deploy the machine across multiple subscription. Would this fulfill the requirement? What does it do with the multiple subscription? If you have to increase the availability of your VM, your failover should not be though. What what it do with the subscription? Nothing, right? So again, the answer is no for this one. Okay. Now the next question is, again same question also, your company decided to deploy a set of VM in Azure, they want to increase the availability of the underlying machine, you decide to deploy the machine across multiple availability zone, I told you, there are two things, availability zone and availability shape, if these two, are, two things are there, then you can select yes, okay. By these two ways only, you can get maximum uh, uptime, okay, there should not be any failure. Your company wants to use Azure Storage Services service. They have provisioned a general purpose V2 storage uh, on uh, V2 storage account. Which of the following in the storage account is used for storage of hard disk file for Azure VM? You remember similar kind of a question we have answered Q. But here uh, it's related to your storage, right? So if you want to provision a general purpose V2 storage account, which of the following in the storage account is used for the storage of a hard disk file? That is your BLOB, blob file. Okay. Now the next question is, guys, your company wants to use Azure storage service. They have provisioned a general purpose V2 storage account. Which of the following of the storage account is used for, a, uh, for the storage of file that can be accessed via SMB? Okay. So SMB can be only accessed via your file. If you go and see the definition of assembly, sorry, SMB, so you will get your answer. Okay. Now moving to the next question, guys. That is, uh, your company is planning to set pay as you do subscription in Azure. Would they have access to MSDN support forum? Yes, absolutely. This is true. Okay. There is nothing we can do. The answer is yes. Uh, your company has set up a VPN device on their own premises that will be used for site to site. Remember site to site. One network to another network. Okay. Site to site. One data center to another. From It could be your on premises to your public cloud. Okay. So
so this is side to side connection which of the following will represent on premise vpn device in azure requirement so for on premises it will be a local network gateway same question i have answer in the set 1 if you go to set 1 you will get your answer if you want to understand more okay you are trying to understand data privacy policy and international standards which of the following is correctly described below statement an organization that define international standards across all industry yes i is so right international standard organization right that is called iso an organization that define international standard that is iso okay so here now the european policy that regulates data privacy and data protection the gdpr if you go and read the full form of gdpr you will get your answer that is data uh, that is uh, regulate uh, data privacy and data protection correct so now moving to the next question guys that is the final question question number 50 you are trying to understand data privacy policy and international standards which of the following is correctly described below statement a dedicated public cloud for federal and state agencies in use that is azure dorm okay so yeah guys we are done with the session uh, so thank you for watching this video but don't forget to like share and subscribe this channel and those who do who want to know more about me they can visit my uh, secondary channel that is art and mom a r t h and mom m o m my son image will be there with some picture so you can go you can see and uh, even though i have linked that particular channel to this one so again thank you for watching this video have a nice day